we're going to be welcoming our new Big Ten teams into the conference. So it kind of got confusing. You might have saw some people get confused with it on social media. But actually, the Big Ten is welcoming Oregon, UCLA, USC, and Washington into the Big Ten on the 2nd of August. Not the 1st of August, the 2nd of August. If you go to Big Ten Network, I think they're doing like two hours special of each individual team uh, sometime today. So that'll be interesting. Go over there. Check that out. Well, what I want to do is I want to look at the history of all these programs, right? Look at the numbers and kind of accommodate ourselves with what kind of teams are coming in. We know kind of how they are right now, right? We've thought about the power rankings. We've thought about the records, what they've been recently. Washington just went to a national championship. However, Oregon's getting a whole lot of the buzz. However, USC is more the blue bud. And then you have UCLA who has some rich history, but they're not necessarily, they, they are not, uh, have not been necessarily the most widely known team here lately. And uh, part of that is also changing. Kelly leaving to go be the offensive coordinator, Ohio State, leaving a head coaching job in the Big Ten to go be an offensive coordinator somewhere else. That is a very interesting choice by him. But let's go ahead and look at these programs first. All right. If I go up here, there I am. All right. So first one, alphabetical order. All right. We're not trying to play favorites here. Oregon. Oregon has a uh, 577 all-time win percentage, so 57.7%. That is 37th nationally. Zero national championships, 13 conference championships, uh, 37 total bowl wins, uh, wins all time, 34th, 704. Their bowl record is under 50%. However, most teams that do well and get to good bowls, you're going to find them to be under that threshold, so it's not uncommon. 11 consensus All-Americans, that's 55th. The highest thing they are in, they do have one Heisman winner. Uh, that's tied for 19th. 244 NFL draft picks, that is 36th. And then the next highest area for them is the weeks in the AP poll, 366. That is good for 24th. And if you look at this graph, I hear it have here in the middle, this shows you uh, kind of how they did each year. If they are under and they're in the gray area, that means that they had a losing record that season. If they are above, that means they had a winning record. And obviously the higher you are, the higher your win total is. You look over here on the left and you'll see the win percentages for them that year. So Oregon coming in, they're a really hot team right now. Some people are picking them to win the conference over Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, USC, Iowa, some of those teams that they're being talked about with, but they don't necessarily have the rich history of some other teams. When you're talking about a blue blood coming in, you're looking at more USC being that kind of team. Oregon, not so much. They are, uh, you know, top 50 in a lot of areas, but only one area are they top 20 and that's a Heisman winner. So, I mean, this this program does not have the best history in the world. Now, recently, I think you could say they've been an elite program for the past 10, 15 years, I would say, probably 10, because they made the national championship game in 2014, and they've been a very good team, high winning percentages year after year. I mean, if you're going to call LSU an elite team, I think you have to call Oregon an elite team over the past 10 years, because... LSU's kind of had their dips. Oregon had one year where they dipped below 50% but uh, win percentage, but they've been going back up. And, uh, and they've done it with multiple coaches, too. That is something I always look at as something that's really impressive. They had Mark Helfrich. They had Mario Cristobal. They had uh, Dan Lanning now. And even before Mark Helfrich, they had uh, Chip Kelly as well. So, I mean, when you're looking at the last 10 years, I think Chip Kelly was before the last 10 years. That's right, because Helfrich was there when they went to the national championship. But if you just look at what this program has been able to do, it's not all been built by one coach. Okay. So it's not just one coach building a program. It's a program that has been able to sustain. Of course, that partnership with Nike helps in a lot of ways, but Hey, that's a part of your program. That's a part of your culture. That's a part of who you are. So massive credit to Oregon for being able to be one of those top tier teams lately, an elite program. And I think if, you know, Oregon coming to the big 10, it's only going to help improve that, 
uh, you know, who they are, people's perception of who they are as well. So very happy to have Oregon a part of the Big Ten. Maybe they don't bring some of the history that other some other teams bring, but they definitely bring the relevancy and the eliteness of today that a lot of teams are really chasing after, especially with a coach like Dan Lanning, who has the potential, I'm not going to say he is yet, but who has the potential to be one of the best coaches in college football. He just has to keep working, keep grinding, keep being that awesome coach that he has been lately needs to improve in a few areas obviously he's not won the conference or anything like that yet but he uh he's definitely on his way there and uh for for duck fans i think i think they're they're happy with him all right let's move on to ucla ucla got taken over by deshaun foster this offseason after chip kelly left if you look here at some of their numbers better numbers than oregon honestly uh 57.9 all-time record win percentage, one national championship, that's 32nd, 17 conference championships, 38 bowl games, 630 all-time wins, that's only 60th, let's see, oh, I stopped the bowl record, 46.1% bowl record, 63rd, again, if you're playing in good bowl games, sometimes you're going to lose, it is what it is, I'm not going to get too caught up in that, 42 consensus All-Americans, that's almost top 10, that is 12th. They also have one Heisman winner, 339 NFL draft picks. That is good for 15th in 554 weeks in the AP poll. That is good for 16th. So UCLA, as you can tell by the graph here, if you're watching on YouTube, they had, what was that? One, two, three, four, five. They had five years where they were under 50%. And that, I mean, that stinks, right? That really demoralizes your program when you're down for that many years, especially in a power five, power four conference. However, Chip Kelly was able to coach them to some winning records. And even last year, they had a pretty good winning record. It wasn't anything spectacular, but, uh, you know, it was down from the year before, but they, they didn't get back down to uh, one of those losing records. And that was with the program in a bad spot. So I want to see what Deshaun Foster can do with this program in a healthy spot. Right. That was one of the that that is one of the complaints many UCLA fans have is how the program was in a bad spot. We didn't have NIL. Uh, you know, the coaches weren't working together well, the players, you know, work weren't working together well. And a lot of that goes back to coaching. And I think at a certain point, you know, maybe head coaching just wasn't Chip Kelly's strong suit. You know, he was a head coach at Oregon and things went really well there, but he also had that offense humming with a lot of you know, talented players, I guess you could say. I mean, they were underrated in a lot of ways, but a lot of them had good athleticism that he was able to utilize. Uh, and he did that somewhat at UCLA, but things were definitely falling off a little bit there toward the end. He wasn't able to get some of the players he wanted. And that probably contributes to why he decided to ditch and go to the, go to Ohio State. So, uh, you know, UCLA, not the worst history in the world. I think some people would think UCLA has worse history than this, but it's not bad history. It's definitely not some of the history that we can see in some other Power Four programs. It's not so good. Um, but, you know, maybe they don't have the relevance of Oregon right now, but we'll see what Deshaun Foster can do. I personally feel like Deshaun Foster can get it in a good place. I think people just need to wait on him. He's a first time head coach. It's going to take him some getting used to, it's going to take him some time. And, uh, you know, he loves UCLA. He's an alumni, he played there, he loves UCLA. Um, so give him his time. He's gonna, he's gonna do it. So, all right. USC, obviously very storied program. We talked about a blue blood. Uh, they are top 10 in every area that win Winsipedia looks at except all time wins, but their all time win percentage their all time record 69.5%. That is good for eighth all time, 11, 11 national championships. We can argue about AP poll, all that stuff, all we want, but still 11 counted national championships, third all time, 37 conference champion, 55 bowl games overall, six overtime, 875 wins all time. Again, I said there was only one part where they're not top 10. That's the one part. They're 11th. So one spot away from top 10, a 63.6% bowl record. That is super impressive. Six, uh, eighth all time there. 84 consensus All-Americans, fifth, and uh, Lincoln Riley, he's at home here with eight Heisman winners. That sits at first all-time NFL draft picks, 531, that's second, weeks in the AP poll, 813, that is sixth. So, I mean, 
people kind of had a little bit of an issue with the way that Lincoln Riley was talking at Big Ten Media Days, how confident he was, how, I mean, a lot of people were saying it was arrogance. I don't know if it was arrogance. It just was, it was confidence, right? And he, he believes in himself. He believes in his program and he believes that if he gets USC on the right trajectory, USC, that they're going to be a powerhouse program in college football again, if he can get them on that right trajectory. Now, I think you, Lincoln Riley needs to take some time and deeply look at who he is as a coach and what he prioritizes. He brought in Danton Lynn, and I mean, Dan is a great hire. I mean, I, he he did some really good stuff at UCLA. Honestly, kind of saved UCLA in some ways last year when Chip Kelly's things weren't working so well on offense with his freshman quarterback. But, but I think that Lincoln Riley, if he can get some of this stuff sort it out with the defense. He's going to have UCLA right back up there, a top 10 team every single year. And I mean, if you if you can get the defense right, right? This is what we've been talking about with UCLA, UCLA with USC for so long. If you can get the defense right, Lincoln Riley will take care of that offense. But Lincoln Riley also needs to have a bit of a realization moment to where he is okay with that defense being good you don't have to run a high high powered offense at all times because sometimes that can deter your defense uh and, and not make them as good of a team and so don't cater to the offense all the time you know yes you want to have a very uh, you know a very good offense that works really well but at the same time i mean i'm not telling you all anything new you know that this about lincoln riley and, and usc so we'll see but ucla you Keep calling them UCLA. USC definitely has the potential. They are going to get there, I think. I think Lincoln Riley is going to figure this defense stuff out. Either that or he's going to leave for the NFL. One of the two. He's either going to figure it out or he's going to leave and go to the NFL, where I do think he would have an offensive coordinator job waiting for him if uh, if somebody wanted to give it to him. All right, last team, Washington. Washington with some better history than I think pe- some people might think. Honestly, they're kind of close to Oregon, a little bit better than Oregon. Um, I, they do have some rankings in the 30s like Oregon, uh, but at the same time, they also have more rankings in the top 20, so that's why I say they're probably higher than Oregon. But uh, 62% all-time win percentage, that's good for 22nd, 2 national championships, that's good for 27th, 18 conference championships, that's good for 42 bowl games, that is good for 19th, 774 all-time wins, good for top 20, 17th, again, bowl record, nothing to write home about, 51st at 48.8% consensus All-Americans, this is one place that they really struggle, 31st, zero Heisman winners, so when you're zero Heisman winners, you're automatically tied for 38th, because, you know, only, what, 37 teams have had a Heisman winner at some point, and then... Actually, I don't know if that's correct. I don't know. Anyway, that's what it would look like. Uh, 325 NFL draft picks, 16th, and then 481 weeks in the AP poll, 20th. Um, Washington has always felt like if they have the right coach, it's not a program that can sustain a bad coaching hire and just be okay. I don't want to say just be okay. It's not a program that's going to win regardless of a bad coaching hire. There are very few programs out there that can continue to win regardless of a bad coaching hire. But when Washington hires the right coach, they are awesome. I mean, when you put the right coach on that team, they can be very, very good, i.e. Kalen DeBoer. Kalen DeBoer came from around that area, Washington hired him, and I think that Washington is one of those programs where if the coach is good, they will give that coach everything they need. So major props to Washington. It's just about getting the right coach into that program. In 2021, they dipped below uh, the 500 record that you know you'd want to be at, so that way you can make a bowl game, do stuff like that. But at the end of the day, Washington, uh, they just they they can get behind a coach, and I commend them for that. I don't think that's something you go against Washington on. But at the end of the day, they do have to make sure they hire the right coach. But that's not anything different than most other programs. Most other programs uh, need to make sure they hire the right coach all the time. But Washington, they have the ability, if they do hire the right coach, it's not just like, oh, yeah, we win eight or nine games every year. No, they can get to a national championship. They can win a national championship. So I love this addition of Washington to the Big Ten. I've always thought Washington was a good 
uh, basketball program. And like I said, as long as they had the right coach. And I think if Washington gets the right coach, they will be very good. And there's just so many ways that Michigan, that uh, Washington reminds me of Michigan, right? I mean, I think that program can be very good as long as they get the right coach in there and they'll pop up and they'll do some really cool things from here and there. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you don't get the right coach in there, you're also looking at a possibly a bad situation. So Washington been very good lately. They have solid history. I wouldn't say it's anything great. I wouldn't say it's bad by any means, but it's solid and uh, they're going to be relevant here in the years to come. I think under Jed Fish, as long as Jed Fish doesn't leave or anything like that, the dude doesn't seem to stick around anywhere for very long. So we'll see how that goes. 